In this video, we're going to talk about convergence to the mean, specifically using Chebyshev's bound and then using the central limit theorem. So suppose that we have um, a coin and um, we, are, um, we are basically flipping it many, many times and uh, we're looking at the average number of ones. And in fact, we have two coins. One is the blue coin has um, a bias of uh, 0 0.175 from half, and the other one has a bias of two, 0.02, 2% .02, from half. So they're slightly different. What you see is that after 10,000 iterations, you, it is very hard to distinguish the two distributions. However, if we run it a million iterations, then it is very clear uh, that the red um, that the red, red traces have um, a higher bias than the blue traces, and um, we can clearly identify which is which. So, if we put here the ten thousand iterations, we see that that's really the very much the beginning, and that we cannot separate them, the blue and the red. And, but if we run it more, then uh, we get to separate them. So we want to understand a little better what does it take in order to separate the two coins. So we're going to talk about confidence intervals. A confidence interval is basically, um, here blown up, uh, is an interval such that with high probability the um, the random outcome of flipping the coin uh, many times should fall within that interval. Okay, so it's an interval that is deterministic, but it tells us where, um, the, um, where the outcomes of these uh, averages uh, would fall with high probability. So we want to understand how does the length of this confidence interval change as the number of uh, coin flips increases. So suppose that we are repeating the experiment either 100,000 times or 200,000 times. Doubling the number of experiments will decrease the length of the confidence interval, right? keeping the level of confidence that we're interested in fixed. So the question is, by how much? And here are the three answers. Um, I'd like you to think about those and then answer after the, you see the video. Okay, so one way to show uh, the decrease in the confidence interval is to use Chebyshev, as we've seen. Suppose we have a coin that we flip n times and the, the coin's bias is little p and then the uh, n coin flips are denoted by the iid random variables x1 to xn here and um, each one of those has probability p of giving one and probability one minus p of um, having the value zero now we define the average which is simply the sum of the uh, no, of, of these random variables or the number of ones that we got divided by n so we know that we can use this average as an estimate of p because, first of all, because the expected value of the average is, ex is exactly the same as the expected value of a single coin flip, it is p. And second is that the standard deviation around the variance decreases um, like 1 over square root of n. Okay, so p times 1 minus p is a constant and um, we are increasing n, so that causes the standard deviation to decrease as we increase n. Okay, so if we use Chebyshev, we get that the probability that the average um, minus the true value of p is larger than k times sigma is smaller or equal to 1 over k squared. But we can actually calculate this um, this probability exactly, right? Because 
we have uh, coin flips and that basically just defines a binomial distribution and for the binomial distribution we can describe here the probability of getting uh, m ones exactly right so it's n choose m times p to the m times 1 minus p to the n minus m so we can sum these probabilities and we can compare them to the bound okay so we see that if we use uh, Chebyshev and we increase the distance from the mean from 1 sigma to 2 sigma 3 sigma 4 sigma then the probability decreases like 1 1 over 2 squared 1 over 3 squared 1 over 4 squared so it decreases but not at an incredible rate however if we actually look at the correct numbers that we can calculate exactly in this case um, we see that when we get to three standard deviation we get 1 over 370 and when we get to four standard deviation we get 1 over 16,000 as compared to 1 over 16. So in fact the um, Chernoff bound is giving us a very very loose upper bound. The truth is much tighter than that. So let's look at this in some graphs. Okay, so here what we have is um, a coin whose probability of heads is 0 0.7, p is 0 0.7, and we are flipping it uh, different numbers of times. So 2 times, 10 times, 20 times, 40 times, 100 times, 1,000 times. And what we see is that if we compare the width of the peak to the standard deviation, the standard deviation gives us a pretty good characterization of the width, right? So the, the standard deviation is, is, a good, is a good measure. However, if we use just the standard deviation with the um, Chebyshev bound, we see that um, we see that um, the probability of falling outside of the of some interval uh, here it is bounded by the this green line that green lines represent the the Chebyshev uh, bounds that we get for how far we are from the uh, from the mean and what you see is that the true cumulative distribution is goes to, from one from zero to one much much faster than the, these bounds imply okay so the bounds are have the correct uh, width but they are not giving us the correct probability as we saw in the example that we saw a little bit before okay. and um, when we scale we get essentially the same kind of picture but scaled okay so to understand this phenomenon more let's uh, go back and think about the normalized sign okay so if we have x1 to xn be iid random variables with any distribution and suppose that this distribution has a finite mean mu and a standard deviation that is also finite sigma then the sum is sn uh, is the sum of the xi from 1 to n and the normalized sum is defined uh, as follows basically we subtract the mean of the sum so n times mu and we divide it by the standard deviation of the sum okay so now we have a random variable z who has mean 0 and standard deviation 1 okay so that's the mean is 0 and the, and the variance and the standard deviation are both 1 just because of the normalization. Now the central limit theorem, what it says is that if we are summing these random variables as n increases, the distribution of this normalized sum, Zn, converges to the normal distribution. And that is regardless of the distribution of the individual elements xi. So here are some examples for seeing that. Suppose that the distribution that we start with is the uniform distribution, the green line. Okay, so you see that once you add 
uh, two of those, what you get is this triangle, right? You get basically a triangle, the triangular distribution. It goes from here to here to here to here. And then as you, inc as you add three or four or five or six or seven, by the time that you add seven, the distribution is extremely close to the normal distribution. Okay, so that's basically the central limit theorem for a uniform distribution. But you might think, okay, well, the uniform distribution looks pretty easy. So here's a distribution that is a little less easy. Uh, here's a distribution that is triangular, asymmetric. Okay, so it goes up from minus 3 to um, 1.5 or so, and then it goes immediately to 0. Even that distribution that is biased to the right, um, after you average seven elements, it becomes very close to the uh, normal distribution. And here is a crazy distribution, basically a distribution that is like uh, a little crown. Okay, so it has a triang two triangular distributions that are um, head to head. And um, when you sum that one, you have wide, fl wild fluctuation, but still, after you add seven of them, you get very close to the normal distribution. So here is the statement of the central limit theorem. Suppose that you have n variables, x1 to xn, that are iid random variables with some common mean and uh, common variance, sigma squared. Then if you define the normalized version of the sum, then um, the cumulative distribution function of Zn converges to that of the standard normal uh, CDA, okay, which is the formula is given here. And that is in the sense of cumulative distribution probability. Okay, so the CDFs converge to each other. So this um, is a little teaser for the next um, videos. Uh, here we're basically using the assumption that the distribution is normal to say what is the probability that you fall some distance from the uniform distribution. So we have here the normal distribution and if we um, are interested in the probability that the, the random variable is larger by um, let's say one standard deviation then that quantity is called Q1, and then Q2 is for two standard deviation, Q3 for three standard deviation, Q4 for four standard deviation, and what you see is that for four standard deviation, the probability of uh, falling more than four standard deviation if you have a normal distribution is extremely, extremely small. Okay.